Hello, everyone. Once again, Thomas Rene, uh, Head of Voice and Speech at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Um, this is the second video I'm making on vocal onsets. Um, and today, in this video, I want to talk about an aspirate onset. Um, aspirate, aspiration, um, has so many different uh, meanings. I just thought of like my aspirations, my dreams. Um, and my mom's a nurse. She always talked about aspirating as uh, swallowing something down into your uh, your lungs accidentally. Uh, but for our purposes, aspiration is really kind of a friction caused by air rubbing up against an articulator or a particular piece of anatomy in your mouth. And specifically, we're looking at uh, the air rubbing up and causing friction against the vocal folds themselves. So let's, uh, as we did in the glottal onset video, if you have watched that, um, let's orient ourselves to the anatomy that we're talking about. Oh, I have so many things up right now. There we go. So once again, let me just show you this, or if you're joining me for the first time, let's look at this together. <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm looking at um, an image that was created, and this is going to be an image as if we were looking down the throat. So I'm going to pretend to place a microphone, I'm talking microphone, a camera into my mouth and down my throat and so that we can see from the top down on the top of my larynx and that is my voice box. Uh, lots of things, but I'm going to pinpoint these white bands right here. And these bands are the vocal ligament or the, the very edge of the vocal folds. And what we're going to look at today is how we can articulate these vocal folds or these vocal ligaments very, very close together while the air, the breath is coming by, again, causing friction. I'm going to change the image so I can get rid of um, all this muscle and other soft tissues. So hopefully it's a little clearer. And the image I'm going to use is this one. We have the larynx, but just the cartilages. Uh, here, all that white stuff. And there is a muscle here, which I'm not going to talk about for this video. And I'm going to bring us back to these white bands. And once again, here's our vocal ligament or the very edge of the vocal folds. Now, I want you to notice that in this image, the vocal folds are approximating. They're very, very close, but they're not actually touching, such as this, which they're not really even touching in this image if we're being specific. But an image like this, where they're incredibly, incredibly close, but they're not fully in contact. And so when we're talking about an aspirate onset, a particular sound that we could use to start making a sound, is when we bring the vocal folds very close together, but instead of bringing them in contact, the breath is gonna come up and past them, and again, cause that friction. We do this all the time, when you're ready to gossip about someone or when uh, you're telling a secret uh, or we've been doing it all our lives and we just whisper. And so I'm just gonna have you whisper a little bit. And so I'm gonna start whispering. I'm not sure if you can actually hear me with this audio system, but we'll check it out before I post it. And so if you just give a practice about whispering, um, talk to yourself, whatever you wanna say, uh, and feel what that's like and uh, not just to hear the sound, but really experience, does that feel different as opposed to when you're talking or does it feel different to when you're just breathing, not making any sound at all? So I'm gonna give us a moment, just breathe. And then whisper to yourself. And when you engage with that whispering, when you engage with that whispering, does that change the sensation? And so engage with that kinesthetic awareness of what does it feel like to have aspiration, to have the breath cause friction against the vocal folds. I'm just gonna do a little bit more whispering to feel what that's like. Excellent. And so that's an aspirate onset. And now we're actually gonna put it onto some singing. Um, I would say, I don't wanna practice this one too, too much because whispering a lot, like, everything, right? Doing um, a lot of similar physical actions can either cause tension or uh, just make some muscles unbalanced or cause some damage. Because we're asking the breath to get uh, cause friction against the vocal folds, it does put us prone after extended periods of use to some damage. It's really drying on the vocal folds. So if you are practicing making sure that you 
have your water readily available, taking regular breaks and not doing too much of it. Um, I always like to say smaller amounts of practice more often is actually more effective anyways than doing a lot of practice in one go and less frequently. So not too much, but we're gonna do a little something. Uh, I'm gonna stay on one note and I'm going to add this aspirate onset before a couple different vowels. Uh, I think most English speakers are probably going to engage with some pronunciations of words that I might use to trick us into this, but I know um, not um, all English speakers are going to say hello with that sound. So if this is a not familiar sound for you or something that I say, oh, say he or hey or Hi, like I do, and you're like, that's not my accent. Fair enough. And I want you to just come back to the whispering experience that you probably have done in your life and just feel what that's like so that we can find the hi and explore how I use the aspiration, use that breath to then come on to voicing after the or for many of us, the H sound, if that makes any sense. So I'm gonna throw a few bells out there with aspirated onset. I'm gonna do it down here. Please feel free to go up the octave if you need it for your own voice. And I'm just gonna go he, he uh, sorry, he, hey, ha, ho, who. And it's gonna sound something like this. I'm just gonna turn on original sound so I don't cut out here. Um, so hopefully we don't get too much background noise. He, hey, ha, Gonna take a tiny little break because again that can be really drying and I think I'm pushing a little bit more just because I'm performing for this camera um, so I'm gonna ask you guys to back off just a little bit the tiniest bit of tiniest bit of aspiration let's take it again that you want. Uh, I'm going to choose an ah to a start and of course putting that aspirate on set on top of it. So I'm going to have that sound right at the beginning and then move into more of a smooth, uh, very full vocal sound. I'm going to do one more kind of big just so that you can hear it. Now for ease and health, I'm going to back off the sound a little bit, um, so hopefully you can hear it, but here we go. I changed the vowel, doesn't matter for now. helpful and gives you a little something to practice. Um, again, there's a video that I just posted on a glottal onset, uh, 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 kind of a popping sound of the throat. Now we're looking at aspirate onset, kind of this H, this, uh, this soft, cloudy, fluffy, frictiony sound that can come before. So do we want to do this all the time? Probably not, but these are options for vocal style, they're options for vocal exp expressivity. So hopefully this gives you some practice so you can find some diversity in your singing practice. Awesome. All right. Thanks, guys. I hope this helps. Keep practicing, as always. Bye.